I don't want to waste time because this is a very important historical moment. A moment! An historical moment! I couldn't sleep very well last night and you can imagine why. Because the devil said to me, no one's going to come. But you are here! Right to the back! I would, I would like you to remember something. If you don't remember anything else. When I was sleeping, well, I wasn't sleeping but my eyes were closed. God gave me a word. And this is specifically for the people of Mitchell's Plain. God said to me, Mitchell's Plain will be the flower of Cape Town. Mitchell's Plain will be the flower of Cape Town. People will come from overseas to see what God has started in Mitchell's Plain. Amen! This is the start of the revival that people have been prophesying for 20 years plus in the southernmost part of the continent of Africa. Right through to Cairo. A fire has started today. Let's give them all a big clap, please. This is our time. This is our time. It would not be proper for me to not start with the Word of God. Because you see folks, we cannot pray to a God we don't know. And the most important thing is first that we repent. If there's one word you must remember from this meeting is the word of repentance. What does repentance mean? Repentance mean, means coming back to God. Amen. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 41, from verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. God is speaking to you, South Africa. This is a word from God for this season. Listen carefully. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with you shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and thou shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and the needy seek water. Did you get that? I'll read it again. When the poor and the needy seek water. And there is none. And their tongue faileth for thirst. I the Lord will hear them. God is going to hear your prayers today. And Cape Town is going to be eternally indebted to the people of Mitchell's Plain for their prayers. Amen. Amen. 
I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittai tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree, and I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine tree, and the box tree together. Verse 20, listen carefully, that they may see, and know, and consider, and understand together, that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Amen. 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 Folks, folks, this is a word for us for now. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. The Bible says without holiness, no one will see God. You say to me, oh Angus, what is holiness? Holiness is the end product of obedience. When you start to obey the word of God, then God blesses you. Many of you here today, this is going to be the first day of the rest of your life. Today, you have to make a decision. Very simple. Am I going to walk with God? Or am I going to walk with the devil? There's no other place. I trust that not one of you will leave this place today not committed to Jesus Christ. We are living in dangerous times. The Bible says to us very clearly in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29, I am a consuming fire. I have a problem with the way in which people pray, play with the name of Jesus. I have a problem. He is not your mate. He's not your China. He's not the man upstairs. He is God. He is God. He is God. Now some of you are sitting there and you're saying, Well, Angus, who invited you to Mitchell's Plain? That's a good question. The answer is no one on earth. The answer is God told me with this team to come here. That's why I'm here. I don't know if you've heard of the Macedonian call. The Macedonian call, Acts chapter 16 verse 9. And Paul was going to go to Asia. And the Lord said, don't go to Asia. I was going to America. The Lord said, don't go to America. Not this year. I was going to go to Nigeria. The Lord said, don't go to Nigeria this year. I was going to go to Dubai. The Lord said, don't go to Dubai this year. And then Paul went to sleep and he had a dream and he dreamt that there was a man standing in Macedonia and he called Paul he said come over and help us I was sitting in my prayer room one morning I was reading that little scripture union daily devotional and a portfolio of a young man from this area came up and God said to me Go to Mitchell's plan. That's why I'm here. Can we give the Lord a big clap, please? A big clap. Folks, I do not believe in coincidences. I believe only in God incidences. There was another farmer. His name was Moses. He was looking after his father and raw sheep. And God spoke to him through a burning bush. That did not disintegrate. And God said, go to Pharaoh. By the way, just in case you forgot, we are sitting today at the southernmost point of the continent of Africa. Moses was at the northernmost point of the continent of Africa. I want to say to you, this continent is no longer the dark continent. This continent is the continent of light. This continent is the continent that sheltered the baby Jesus. This will be the last continent standing before Jesus comes. Let's give him a big clap, please. Amen. Amen.
Moses said, he said, Lord, when I go to see the people in Egypt, who must I say, send me? He said, you tell them, I am a sent you. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Lord your God. John chapter 14 verse 6, if I quote the scripture in some overseas countries, they'll deport me. Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one is going to heaven without God. Give the Lord a clap, please. The Macedonian call, that's why we're here this morning, this afternoon. That's why we're here this afternoon, and I want to tell you, I am so emotionally overwhelmed one word repentance repentance means according to the oxford dictionary it means to feel or to express sincere regret or remorse a famous preacher said christianity starts with repentance see see some people don't preach repentance anymore oh brother i've been saved by grace so that gives you uh, permission to live like a heathen, does it? Does that give you permission to go and have an affair with your friend's wife? Does that give you permission to get drunk every night? Does that give you permission to beat up your wife? Does that give you permission to it? No, it doesn't. Jesus says you shall know them by the fruit. A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. It's time for repentance. There was a man by the name of John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. He said that we must repent and bear fruit worthy of our repentance. I want to say to you, people of Mitchell's Plain and Cape Town and Western Province, and I want you to listen carefully. This victim mentality must stop today. You don't owe anybody anything. The days of the begging ball are finished. Stand up people of Mitchell's Plain and say as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But we need to confess our sins today, and that's why I'm here. We're going to pray in just a few minutes. All of us are going to pray in this place. 1 John 1 9 says, If you confess your sins, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We are going to say sorry to God. We are going to, this problem that we have is not the problem of the government. No. It's your problem and my problem. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all these other things will be added to you. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap, please. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to the church. Yes, I want to speak to the church. See, people can criticize the government. They can criticize our leadership. But I want to tell you, the problem is with the church. I'm the church. You're the church. The problem is with the church. You know what the church is? Arrogant. Proud. See? And you know what Jesus says? 1 Peter 5.5. 5, he says, I resist the proud. But I give grace to the humble. You will never see me preach a sermon without getting on my knees first. Because I was the most arrogant, proud farmer that you've ever met. And God broke me. And he humbled me. Some of us today need to get on our knees. And we need to humble ourselves in the presence of God. And then you'll see God start listening to your prayers. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be here. God loves you so much. Say to the person sitting next to you, God loves you. Say it. Say it again. I can't hear you. God loves you. We in the church, we take our salvation for granted. See, some of us, we stay in a holy huddle. We drive past those shanties every single day and we don't even cry, man. I want to cry when I see this man. I see a young girl selling her body 
for money to feed a family, man, it makes me cry, man. Don't get hard, folks. There's so much potential in this place. I'm looking at an army that can change the continent of Africa in no time at all. Right here. Right here. Give yourselves a big clap, please. <clears throat> Complacency is a devilish thing. Jesus said, I would rather you be ice cold than lukewarm. If you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. No repentance, no salvation. No repentance, no revival. No repentance, no rain. It's getting quiet now. No repentance, no healing. No repentance, no deliverance. No repentance, no vision. No repentance, no freedom. Jesus says, if you don't gather with me, you scatter abroad. Remorse is to be sorry. Some of you are very sorry today. But repentance is to be so sorry that you're going to stop. You see, I can't pray for you, sir, if you've got a drinking problem. And I ask the Lord to set you free and you go back and drink again. It doesn't work. Madam, you've got problems with your lungs. You've got a disease in your lungs. And I pray for you to stop smoking and you carry on smoking. You will not get healed. See, repentance is you walk in this way, and you stop, and then you walk the other way. See, when I met Jesus Christ almost 40 years ago, He changed my life. In an instant, He can do it for you. God is no respecter of persons. He'll use any man, any woman, any boy, any girl here today. I don't come from a privileged background. My father was a blue-collar worker. He was a blacksmith. I understand what it is to have nothing. But there's no ways I'm a peasant. I'm a child of God. And I have all the potential that He wants in me. And so have you. I tell you, sir, stick that chest out tomorrow morning. Pull those shoulders back when you go to church. You say, I'm a child of the living God. The devil must go to hell. Amen. Amen. What happens after we repent? Then we find favor with God. At the moment, I'm so emotional. When I flew here with that helicopter, by the way, it doesn't belong to me. I just borrowed it. <laughs> Jesus borrowed a donkey. That's right. And that jet, it's not mine. I just borrowed it. I don't even own a house. I gave my sons the farm, the title deeds, the checkbook, and the debt. <laughs> I'm free like an eagle! Free! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We experience joy and love and strength and peace and patience. God gave me a vision! See? God can give you a vision this afternoon if you dare to trust Him. You say, Uncle Angus, I'm a pensioner. No such word in the Bible. No retirement. Only promotion. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big clap, folks. This is the best day of the rest of our lives. We are about to pray. We are about to pray, and uh, I'm so excited because I love prayer. My wife is an intercessor. I will never come to a meeting if there's no prayer. Never ever come to a meeting if there's no prayer. God loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son for you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. I want to say to you, Mitchell's plain, this is the best day of your life. I want to say to you, don't miss it, because you might never get another chance. This is your opportunity to start again. You say, Uncle Angus, I've done some terrible things in my life. I tell you, if you repent today, God will wipe them out with the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Do you know God's got a bad memory? When He forgives, He forgets. 
Tomorrow morning you wake up, you say, Lord, you know what I did yesterday? He says, no, I don't know what you did yesterday. What did you do? Today we need to make some decisions. In this place, no more prostitution. No more gangsters. No more drug addicts. No more alcoholics. No more hatred. No more fear. Faith in God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to put our faith into action. Don't blame the government. No. We put the government in power. Do you know the power of prayer? I'm so honored I've got some dignitaries sitting here today and I'm, I, I, I salute you in the name of Jesus Christ and I thank you for coming out. Can you give them a clap please? Yeah, thank you very much. There's an old statesman sitting in the front row. He's the oldest living member of parliament in the history of South Africa. Prince Mansuto, the Konzo and the Baba, the Konzo and the Siabon, the Lord. But the responsibility of this nation lies in the hands of every single one of us, you and me. Some of us have got too much, and some of us have got too little. It's changing. I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy. No one deserves to beg. Every person needs an equal opportunity. And this is not politics, this is Jesus! So we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to change the nation today. The southernmost point of Africa. These television cameras are going to be showing this this program tomorrow morning on TBN from Cape Town to Cairo and the whole of Europe tomorrow and then it's going to America and then we hope the Americans are going to learn something from this Amen! 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 So we're going to stop today. I want to see the plundering of the devil stop today. The responsibility lies with you and me. The church must wake up. Christianity is hanging in the balance today. What you do when you leave this place is going to affect this nation. That's an absolute fact. We need to make a decision. And I'm going to give you that opportunity to make that decision. And then, we're going to pray. You see folks, there's a scripture that's so worn out. Everybody quotes it. But obviously nobody believes it. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people. Who is that? That is the believer. That is the Christian. We love all different faiths and religions, but there's only one God. And He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen! Amen! If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven. Forgive our sins and heal the land. Bring rain to the land. I am telling you again, first the spiritual, then the physical. First the spiritual, and then the rain's coming. Plenty rain. Don't ask me to come back in a few months time and pray to the Lord to stop the rain. I will not be coming back. So go home and repair your boats. 
I want to say to the gang leaders here, listen carefully. I've prayed about this very hard. When we've prayed this prayer of salvation, I'm going to ask the gang leaders of Mitchell's Play and surrounding areas. It's going to take a lot of courage. I'm going to ask you to come up here and join me. Now wait, now wait, 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 wait. Don't clap yet. I want to say something to you about gang leaders. Gang leaders are leaders. They just go in the wrong way. So today, we're going to pray that the gang leaders of Mitchell's Plain and surrounding areas will humble themselves in the sight of God and God will start to use you in your gifting. Can we give the Lord a big clap, please? A big one. I was sitting quietly and I phoned up the son of mine, Henry, and I said, Henry, there's one song I would like you to sing. And what I want to do, we're going to sing that song, Stay Standing, okay? And he's going to sing it in a prayerful manner, and I want you to listen to it. You don't have to sing the words. Folks, listen to me. I want the gang leaders of Mitchell's Plain and surrounding areas, you know exactly who you are, by the time we finish that song, I am going to personally pray for you that God is going to anoint you, He's going to release you, and He's going to make you the true leader that you were supposed to be from when you were a baby. Amen. Now, if, if you are that leader, I want you to start coming forward right now to the frontier, please. Straight away. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. Please come. Gang leaders and their lieutenants, I want you in the front. Please come. This is your time. I'm being obedient to the Holy Spirit, that's all. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. Come to the front today and change your revolver for a Bible. Amen. Can you please come? Please come. I'm talking to the men at the back. Right at the back. You say, what will my family say? It doesn't matter. It's what Jesus says that matters. God will honor His Word. He said to me, Angus, these are leaders. I want to use them in my kingdom. This is your day. That's right. Thank the Lord. I need to get down. I need to get down. I want to go down. I want to give these men something. I want to give them something because I want to show you that God loves you. I want to show you that we love you. I want to show you that South Africa loves you. Come here, young man. From today onwards, look at me. You're going to be a leader for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm giving you a gift. I'm giving you a gift. Will you receive it? I want you to have my hat. Come here, young man. How did you break your arm? Sorry? They hit you. Yeah. But no more from today, see? Okay? No more from today. You are going to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to give you my Bible. This is a very special Bible given to me by my family. For my 70th birthday. I want you to have it, my boy. From today. You're going to be a preacher. You're going to preach the gospel. Do you understand me? 
in the streets of this place. Stand over there. I want to give you my jacket. Put it on. Look at me. I can see you as a man of God from today. You understand me? I'll be checking on you. Give him a clap. But I know one thing. God came for people like you and me. He didn't come for the healthy people. He came for the us. The sick people. And he says, if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus says, go now and sin no more. Amen. Sin no more. No more. Because the Lord's coming very soon. Amen. Thank you very much. So bless him, Lord, in Jesus' name. No more drinking, son. Finish today. Finish. Give him a big clap, please, folks.